everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you a one year ownership update of my 2019 Street Glide Special. Now this one already had the Stage 2 kit set up when I bought it. I bought it as an next demo and uh, so the review will be based on, well it's not even a review, it's just my thoughts on owning this Street Glide Special for a year with the Stage 2 kit on it. So just topping up the fuel tank now and we will hit the road. All right, full tank of fuel. Let's hit the road. All right, so today we will be talking about a year of owning this 2019 Street Glide Special. This is also a vlog, so if you've visited my channel just to watch the review or my thoughts on the Street Glide Special, just forward ahead to the number that it says, the timestamp that it says on the screen right now, because I've got a few more things to do before I talk to you guys about the bike. Now, first things first, I'm up in the Blue Mountains and depending on where you're watching this in the world, I don't know if you know what an Ugg boot is, but in Australia, an Ugg boot is a boot that's lined with sheepskin to keep you warm in winter or any time of the year actually so I've got my orders from Mrs Throttle to come up to the Blue Mountains today which I'm already here and uh, get some updated Ugg boots for our feet all right guys let's show you what an Ugg boot looks like if you're not aware so this is an Ugg boot big boot sheepskin inner keep you nice and warm in winter comfy and uh, you can see there's a whole range of them here very very cool all different colors all different styles and I know that you can get them in the States uh, but I'm not sure if the UK has them or not but in Australia we love these I'm all sorted now. Got my wife's own boots, mine, and most importantly, a nice tub of beautiful, mudgy, raw honey. I love my honey. Anyway, let's hit the road and talk about street lights. Got my huggies, got some honey. Which is good timing because my honey was getting very low. And time to hit the road. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head down to a little place called Yarramundi. It's a nice lookout, but what it'll do, it'll give me a chance to walk around the bike and give you a visual of what we've got going on here. And uh, then we'll talk about what I like and what I don't like. So let me just take you back a little bit. A year ago when I bought this bike I had absolutely 
no plans on buying a Harley Street Glide at all. I had not long bought a Royal Enfield Continental GT 650, they were just released and uh, I was one of the first in Australia to get one and I absolutely love that bike and it was fantastic, it was just what I needed, it was a great little bike I hadn't been riding for quite a few years, in fact 20 years I hadn't been riding for other than doing motorcycle reviews and car reviews and uh, I fell in love with motorcycling again. Now my mate that I was riding with a lot at the time, uh, the same guy that ran the dealership that I bought my Royal Enfield from, he went out and bought a road glide, a Harley Davidson road glide. And previously he had a fat boy that was pretty heavily modified as well. Now, Harley Davidson has always been my dream brand ever since I was a little kid. Uh, but just like for so many people, you know, Harley Davidsons are expensive. Japanese bikes are like a third of the price, and uh, and in particular that Royal Enfield at 10 grand on the road with um, with a couple of mods was uh, was an absolute winner for me. It was so affordable. Fast forward a couple of months and a handful of rides with James and his Road Glide and my Royal Enfield, and needless to say. It was a very different riding experience. Uh, cruising down the road on, a, on an Enfield Cafe racer with a Harley Road Glide rumbling along next to me. And it just made me realize that maybe I do need to get a Harley after all. Now at the time, I'm waffling on a little, on a little bit guys, but uh, again, if you're just here for the review, fast forward to that, that uh, screenshot number to get the review and the update on the bike but as I said it's a vlog so I'm going to waffle a little bit now there became an opportunity where I moved into a new role a new job and this job was on a decent salary so I talked to the Mrs Throttle and said what do you think and she said yeah just do it you know you've taken on a new role uh, reward yourself. So I did. I found this at Canberra Harley. It was an ex demonstrator. And uh, being an ex demonstrator, it was a little bit cheaper, or well, substantially cheaper than brand new. Plus, it had all the modifications that I wanted to do, which was a stage two, a 475 cam. I think that's what they called a 475 cam and also a tune. They delivered it to my workplace. Everything happened so fast. Before you know it, I've got a Harley Davidson Street Glide Special, a dream bike for me, and the Royal Enfield just didn't get ridden that much at all, so I sold the Royal Enfield. Now, the downside to that is that the Royal Enfield was the perfect city bike. I live in the city, or near the city, but I'm always in traffic and lane splitting and all that sort of stuff. Now the Royal Enfield was absolutely perfect for that. This Street Glide Special is absolutely terrible at that. Obviously, it's big, it's wide, it's got panniers, it's got a big fairing on it, it's heavy. So, I have a regret on selling the Royal Enfield. Not a huge regret because financially having two bikes sitting in the garage, both registered, both insured, it takes a lot of coin out of your back pocket and especially during this COVID period I haven't had too much work at all which means that I don't have the, the, the dispensable income, I don't have the fun money that I used to have. You know, I used to have a nice little sports car, or like a sporty car, and my four-wheel drive, we've got a boat, I had two motorbikes, and my wife's car. So all of that sort of stuff adds up, and I've had to downsize a lot because of COVID. Do I regret selling my Enfield? No. It needed to be done. Do I miss it? Yeah, every single day. 
every single day I just need to go to the shops or meet someone for lunch or a coffee or whatever I miss the Royal Enfield it was an epic little bike but Adam who bought it off me down the south coast is having a ball with it and for that I am very very happy anyway that's enough of my waffle I'm heading through the back of the Blue Mountains right now I'm on a road called the Hawkesbury Road and this is going to lead me to Yarramundi Lookout where I'm going to get off the bike show you around the bike talk about the modifications uh, I haven't really done much to it but we'll talk about that as well then I'll jump down the twisties after Yarramundi and I will tell you the things that I love about the bike and the things that I really hate about the bike too anyway see you at Yarramundi all right team here we are at Yarramundi lookout I'm going to show you this view it's absolutely beautiful so we're still in the bottom of the blue mountains but we're looking over Sydney here and uh, it's quite a common little spot for riders to come to check out the scenery uh, if you're if you're based in the western suburbs of Sydney uh, a lot of the riders come up here at the lookout anyway let's have a look look at that absolutely beautiful I should have bought my drone actually it's really nice today so a lot of that land down there that's all full of water now that's last time I was here that was all dry so we've had a fair bit of rain river coming through uh, to be honest I don't know this area I'm assuming just over here I'm assuming just over here is Penrith and down this way maybe it's towards Windsor or something but I'm just making it up really and I will zoom in with the software to see if it works but just on the horizon there you can see the city skyline of Sydney so I think we're about 60 or 70 kilometers away from the city here uh, but it's a good spot it's not too far it's only an hour for my place to get up into an area like this and um, yeah really really nice spot as I said I wish I had bought the drone it would have been really nice to fly a drone off here today um, but I didn't and uh, still lovely anyway beautiful you hear the birds you hear the cicadas in the trees very nice all right team so here's the street glide special so we'll do a quick walk around before I hit the road again uh, as you can see it's the silver all blacked out street glide special uh, twin discs on the front it came with a smaller fairing about this big this is an add-on but I'm going to talk more about that in the very near future in this video because that's one of my bugbears um, I put on highway pegs uh, just so those long days on the highway I can stick my feet out and have a stretch put my legs in a different position it's got a screaming eagle heavy heavy breather there very nice Vance and Hines pipes coming out to the back so you can see Vance and Hines there I really like these for the chrome ends um, I love the blacked out look of the bike but I love the little touches of chrome as well um, this has also got uh, the attachments installed to be able to put a pannier backrest on there uh, and also a little cargo carrier as well so that's money that was well spent and I like the fact that it, this was chrome as well it sort of just matches the tailpipe so very very happy about that um, coming up to the front obviously this is a 114 it's a 114 motor with a stage 2 with a 475 cam and a tune as well and I've also installed the quad lock which is an invaluable tool to be able to put your phone on uh, it's lock solid I haven't found a better product on the market let's see if I can put it on I, thought, I find it fiddly to get it on um, but some people get it on straight away but that's rock solid if you don't have a quad lock you need to get a quad lock you can put these in your car in your home on your desk you can put you can get them with a um, a recharging station as well that's absolutely invaluable tool quad lock is one of the best investments that I put on this and in fact part of it I bought part of it I was given from them to do a review on so I have to be upfront with that then they're not paying me to say this today um, but it is an awesome awesome product um, what else can I tell you about my street glide that's about it from a visual point of view anyway let's hit the road and talk about 
my likes and my dislikes about this bike now oh beast um we're gonna head down this road here hawksby road it's all downhill from here but it's lots of twisties lefts and rights so i'm not going to talk to you on the way down uh, i'm just going to have a little bit of fun but i'm going to bring you along with me so you can enjoy it too uh, once i get to the bottom of the hill onto the flat road i'll start talking about my likes and my dislikes on the street glide special 2019 edition i'll try and get ahead of these lovely ladies so they don't hold me up now a while ago i was up here with a kawasaki doing a review and uh, i needed some photos taken and i happened to run into this bloke called nutbag who took some photos for me if you're watching nutbag I still appreciate that day mate and I'm glad we got to meet. Anyway, just enjoy the little bends coming down through here folks. When I get to the bottom of the hill, we'll talk about my likes and dislikes on this bike. Short but sweet. The bends on the Hawkesbury Road, always fun. Yarramundi. All right, let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this video, folks. You've all been waiting long enough. A year with the Street Glide Special, I've absolutely loved it. I have no regrets on buying this bike, and it's given me no grief at all. Now, the things that I love about this bike obviously being a Harley with a stage 2 kit on it it sounds phenomenal and even when I ride with the Harley owners group everyone comes up and comments about the sound of my bike so that's obviously a win if other, other Harley owners are also saying how nice it sounds that makes me pretty happy it's certainly too loud to be a daily rider uh, I don't think any of my neighbours would be happy if I started this up before 6am every day of the week. Um, but essentially a street glide is probably not a daily rider for very many people at all. I love the horsepower and the torque. When you wind the throttle on and it throws you back in the seat. Now I know that sports bike people are going to say, oh but you've never ridden a sports bike or a super bike. Yes, I have, 
Uh, and yes, they are great. I'm not denying that at all. I'm saying that for a Harley Davidson, for the style of bike it is, it's a Tourer. And for you to wind on the throttle and have to hang on real tight to not fall off the back of the bike, that's, um, that's a really nice amount of power for something that's 380 kilos heavy. Remember, a lot of these sports bikes are 200 kilos. And, uh, and you still get acceleration, which feels great. That's awesome. That's what they're built for. This isn't necessarily built for that. So I love it. And I just love the long distance comfort that you get out of this. You can just sit on 120 kilometers an hour all day long, put it in cruise control, listen to music, put your feet out on the highway pegs like that. And it's like sitting on the leather lounge at home watching TV except for this show is a whole lot better than watching Netflix, no doubt about it. And the other thing that I really love about this, and it's the main reason, or one of the main reasons I bought it, is these panniers on the back, they can fit a lot of gear in there. So if I'm riding on a day, like in a Sydney spring or autumn day, your, day, your day's ride can start at five degrees Celsius, and during the middle of the day get up to 30 degrees Celsius and then drop down to 5 again by the time you're home at night. So essentially we need to pack for or prepare for all seasons in one day. And so it enables me to put on lots of gear in the morning, slowly strip off to bare bones during the day and then in the afternoon as it gets cool you can start putting gear on and it's all located in the panniers on the bike, easy to get to. Now we do need to talk about the things I don't like about this bike. And the first thing that I want to talk about is a problem with most Street Glide specials. Now, a standard Street Glide will have a windscreen that's clear and sits high in front of you there. So you've got no wind buffeting at all. Now, the the, when I first got the Street Glide special, it had a tinted visor that was about that thick and oh what's that a circus or something in there well wow. um and it was just really well obviously with all of this in front of you there's no wind at all that gets your chest but around about here it was hitting me so just around eye level it was hitting me in the helmet causing a massive amount of wind buffeting when you're traveling at highway speeds and there's nothing worse than going down the road like this with your head bobbling. At the end of the day, your brain's rattled, you're tired, your neck's sore, and there's nothing worse. So I went to Harley Davidson and I got this first uh, screen here. Now this is, now I can't remember if it's the 6.5 or it's a 5.5, but it's larger, it's got a lip. Theoretically, that was supposed to fix my problem. Now, the wind comes over this and hits me about forward height on my helmet. So it's nowhere near as bad as it was. However, it's still horrible. When it hits you in the forward, you're still getting bobblehead, you're still getting buffeting, you're still getting a headache, and you're still annoyed as anything by the end of the day, and tired. So, I don't want to go a big clear screen like the standard street lights have. I think that would ruin the look of a street light special. So my plan is, Clockworks have a range of screens. Uh, I probably need another inch with a bit more of a flare and I have a feeling that that would fix my problem or almost alleviate, almost alleviate it. Now, I've read also documents where the wind coming from underneath the tank here could also be an issue. But essentially when I'm riding along and I put my hand up to feel where the wind is, I literally feel it coming from the screen and hitting me right on the forehead. So I'm hoping that the bigger screen will solve my problems. We can only live in hope. So that's my main gripe about the Street Glide Special. 
secondly, I think these speakers, or maybe they need a bigger amp, but I think stock, they're just not powerful enough. Now, I know most motorcyclists are going, well, eh, you've got bloody stereo, sat nav, do you want air conditioning too? Yeah, I get that. Uh, this isn't the reason why I bought the bike, but I certainly love the bike for it. I put it to good use, and when you're munching away at highway miles, having music roaring out of speakers and not in your helmet, certainly makes a big difference so i think the speakers need to be either bigger more powerful or a more powerful amplifier just to get that sound back to you now i know on the cvo on the higher rated ones there's speakers in the panniers behind you as well uh, for the passenger and i know on the road glide the road glide sound system is absolutely amazing in comparison so that's something to think about if you're looking at a street glide special Stereo is great. I don't use the sat nav because I've got my phone set up here on the quad lock. Uh, so I just use Google Maps. I find it better because it gives you traffic updates as well. And, uh, and it's still in my line of sight. It doesn't give me any grief. So I literally just use the stereo for trip meters and for music. Tank size is fantastic. When I fill it up, I get about a 500 kilometer range as far as the gauge goes now because I've got a stage 2 um, that range is obviously less it chews a lot more fuel than a normal street glide does now while I'm there let's talk about the stage 2 on this the good things about it number one sounds phenomenal number two uh, the power output is amazing both torque and horsepower really really nice power increases now this has also got the 4, 475 I think it's called a 475 if it's not I'll put it on the screen it's got the cam now what the cam does is make these modern Milwaukee 8 engines that normally sound smooth running it actually makes them sound lumpy like a um, like an older style of engine would have in the Harley Davidson range. Now that makes a beautiful amount of, uh, of adds to the audible sounds that comes out of the bike. It adds a little bit to horsepower, of course, as well, and it puts a little bit of nice vibration into the bike to remind you that you're riding a Harley because those Milwaukee 8 engines run pretty smoothly uh, and some traditional Harley riders don't like how smooth they run they like this lumpy feel now the downside to this stage 2 that I've got on here with the 475 cam and the tune is at high speeds it's amazing when you're accelerating going through the gears it's absolutely amazing when you're sitting in slow traffic stop and start traffic it's just really horrible it's really jerky there's nothing smooth about it at all uh, you get used to it but it's not an enjoyable bike to ride in traffic and it's not an enjoyable bike to ride at slow speeds what it is uh, obviously it's designed to be a tour it's designed to get out on the open road anyway I get that um, but if you ride predominantly in the city I would suggest don't put the cam in or at least talk to your Harley Davidson dealer and just say to them that you, you're going to do predominantly city riding um, and you've heard that it gets a bit choppy and a bit lumpy at low speeds with the cam in it and with the stage two and just get the best advice from those Harley Davidson professionals um, I don't regret having this however um, at slow speeds and I live near the city uh, it is a pain in the bum. Is there anything else that I don't like about the Street Glide special? No, no, not really. Uh, it's it's an amazing bike. Uh, it's a heavy bike. As long as you understand that it, when you're buying buying a Tourer, you're buying a heavy bike. You're buying an awkward bike. Uh, when you're running in a city but the moment you get it above 20 30 kilometers an hour it becomes it doesn't feel as heavy and cumbersome it really holds its weight nicely 
as long as you're traveling at above walking pace. Would I buy the Street Glide Special again if I was to start from scratch? Do you know, that's probably a question that has a few answers. My first answer is kind of yes, kind of no. Yes, because I love it and I love the horsepower of the 114. I love the sound. I love the stature of the Street Glide uh, just from a physical uh, looks point of view. But what bikes would I consider a bit stronger instead of this in the future or if I was to do it again? I would have heavily considered the Road Glide, sorry, no, the Road King Special. Now, I get hot really easy and on a hot day, this fairing blocks out all of the wind off your body, which is what it's designed to do. With a Road King Special, that has the clear screen, it's detachable. So if I had the Road King instead, I think that in summer, I'd have the opportunity to detach that screen on a hot day or when you're just doing slow riding and then put it on when you're getting out on the highway as well. So the Road King Special would be a choice that I'd certainly put in the same category as this. Now the other one would be going down to a 107 and getting the Sport Glide. Now, I reviewed a Sport Glide before I bought this. I mean, actually, when it was first released, I, I reviewed the Sport Glide with Wollongong Fraser Harley-Davidson. And I love that bike. And I think with the, the reduction of weight, it's still got panniers, but they're detachable. So you can detach them if you're just doing a city ride, put them on if you're doing a long distance ride and you need to carry gear. And the fairing is a mini fairing, but it's also detachable. So you can have no fairing at all, or you can have fairing or different sizes of fairing as well. Now, I think the Sport Glide with a tune uh, would be an amazing little bike. Uh, I think that that would probably be the thing that I'd lean to and um, and I sometimes I think that that was the bike that I should have bought instead of this. Stay la vie, doesn't matter, I've got this bike now, I'm not selling it, I'm not downgrading to a Sport Glide, maybe in 10 years when I find myself getting a little bit weaker in my 50s and this is, becomes too heavy, I'll consider something like the Sport Glide, uh, but it would certainly be on my shopping list if I was to start again. Anyway guys, today is too good a day to be talking to you folks, I'm afraid. I love you all, uh, but not enough to interrupt my riding. So I hope you enjoyed the video. For those of you that were here just for the review on the Street Glide Special, thanks for stopping in and uh, please consider subscribing. I make videos about anything to do with a throttle, but dominantly it is a Harley Davidson moto vlog because that's what I own. Until the next video guys, throttle on, stay safe, enjoy the beautiful weather, and I'll see you on the next video. Would you believe it? I bought my DSLR to get some really nice photos today and I didn't put the batteries in it. What a clown. <laughs>